Ah, g'day folks. Hope you all had a good New Year's Eve. I know I had a bit of fun. Um, yeah, just thought I'd do a quick video today. Uh, just making the tailgate for Brad's trailer. The one I found at the yard is longer than I needed, which is good. Cut that bit off. I'm going to cut some of this angle iron up. And weld it on like so. So, when you swing the latch in, it hooks onto here. It's going to have one-way hinges so you can actually push the tailgate sideways when it's down horizontal and actually remove it because you've got to be able to get an engine crane up to this trailer and with the tailgate permanently attached it just makes things difficult. So that's all going to be done. Uh, bought paints and other stuff. got some more epoxy black paint. I'll grind all this back and repaint it. Uh, weld some big hinges on it. got some big weld-on gate hinges. And, yeah fit her up. Yeah, the back edge of the trail is a bit of a mess. They've done a quick patch up by putting this piece of steel over it, but I'm either going to have to beat that flat or cut it off. I think I'll end up cutting it off. It's just floating there. And then weld onto this rail that they put along the back end. It's a bit of a mess. Yeah, there's a big hole in there, that's the problem. If anything, I'll just cut it along that edge there. There's a big hole right under there. It's a bit of a mess. But, we'll fix it. Well, most of the fabrication's done. Took a bit of fiddling around and apparently whoever did the uh, bending work, the brake press work on this thing is absolutely pathetic because they left 10 mil variation between that end and that end. Both these pieces of angle are cut the same length. That one's flush. This one here is a 10 mil buddy overhang. So this sheet metal's tapered. Not very good. But my welding works good though. That's welding 1.8 mil sheet metal onto some 3 mil thick angle iron. That's just continuous bead. I'm not spotting it. I was running the welder at 80 amps at 75 volts. So it did quite well. I prefer a MIG though. I've been so used to MIG welding now that I'm doing a stainless steel at work. It's just arc welding is just crap but it all came good I'll give this a quick hit with the flap wheel on the grinder clean that up uh, then work on mounting the hinges I'm going to make this tailgate removable because it's a bit tricky getting the engine crane right up to it when the tailgate's hanging down so you hold it horizontal with the deck of the trailer and slide it forward and it unlocks like, a, like picking a gate off its hinges and yeah there you go Keep a bit of weight on it to stop it from warping. Should be pretty good. Now, for those who don't do a lot of sheet metal work, when I refer to a slitting wheel, that's pretty much what I refer to. It's a one millimeter thick abrasive cutoff wheel. These are great for opening up refrigerant compressors. Like these ones here, which I'm going to do a video on soon. I've already cut them, but you just run it just through the weld line around the casing, and then you can lift the top off. I opened these up a while ago, I just haven't done a video of it. But there's a sneak preview, pancake compressor. It's a bit rusty because the moisture's gotten in there, but it'll work. And that's the flap wheel that I refer to. It's overlapping flaps of uh, canvas-backed sandpaper. And it does wonders just for contouring and ripping down paint and crap. It's not quite as harsh as a hard, rigid grinding wheel. Rigid grinding wheels will leave gouges and strations and marks all over everything, but they're good for ripping off material. Whereas this one's not so good for ripping off amounts of material, but it's good for chamfering and smoothing everything out prior to painting. They're wonderful things. Uh, that one's made by Josco, the Brumby flat disc. It's only 100 mil. Aluminum, steel, cast iron, and most metals. You can get special ones from Ferd or Flexivit for stainless steel. This one here, I think stainless, it'll just work on stainless, but you really need the Inox brand one, or the Inox um, type wheels by Ferd. Yeah, that's sort of what I was expecting to find under that uh, piece of sheet metal. I see it a lot at the scrapyard, people just bring the trailer in and dump it. <laughs> then someone buys it does a quick patch up job and sells it on eBay or somewhere like that for a fortune. 
All right, Brad got given this one for nothing, but he said his friend bought it off eBay for 200 bucks and then gave it to him. And yeah, that's where a lot of the scrap scrapyard trailers that I see at the yard end up. Quick patch up, respray, bang it on eBay. There's two, three hundred dollars. That I can tick, I can make this look a little bit better. I might even run a bit of stainless steel sheet all the way up to there or something. It's a bit hard when there's already tray there because then you get dirt and debris trapped in between and it rots everything out. Really needs the tray cut out and new rails and everything put in, but nah, I'm just doing this as a favour, so I'll make that good though, that's busting out. I've got to hinge my tailgate off this, so yeah, that's kind of nasty. It's rotted and cracked. It's almost broken free. Oh well. Good thing I've got lots of lots of uh, tube scrap and other crap like that. I'll just cut some lengths of old steel tube and weld them in. Well, admittedly this isn't my best work, but it's a damn shot better than the person who botched it up for a quick eBay sale. All I'm going to be doing is just tacking all along here, beat it down, tack it. I've got some more off-cuts of steel which I'm going to fill in underneath it. Um, I've actually welded this bar on properly because it was barely hanging in there. Definitely not worthy of hanging a tailgate off. But this bar will stay put now. Uh, there are angle iron chassis rails running down the length of it, so I can weld into them. Which is in there. I've just got to cut this out and grind all that back again and lay another weld over it. But it should end up alright. Uh, this thing here is welded over the top of it. And it's not even 45 degrees. It's whoever operated that that uh, folding machine was uh, a little bit off. Not a right angle. Unfortunately I can't, I don't have a, a bender myself so I can't bend it back to uh, 45. But I'll find some way of making it work. If anything I'll just run the grinder down it, cut the, cut the leg off it, weld it on flush along here and then weld my hinges onto it. Or run this, a bit more of this angle line. up under it like that and just weld the whole lot in like weld it all the way around the back all the way around there and all the way along that way this whole back end will be one rigid piece but at the moment the whole thing is just flopping around you can see there's the edge of the sheet there but it's sitting up on top of the angle line in there that's because the back end of this trailer is actually splayed open it's all come apart and it's actually wedged itself open and because they've run welds and botched it up before selling it, I can't really undo that. I've actually already cut the tailgate and made it to length to suit this. So I'm going to leave it as it is and we'll just make it look pretty and make it work better. Make it safer. That's the main issue. It doesn't matter if it looks a little bit ugly, as long as it's safe. And that's a lot better than it was before. Well, that ain't the prettiest of work, but it's a lot better than it was. There's actually a bit of structure in there. It won't fall off when they drop the tailgate. That's the worst bit. There's still a bit to patch up, but I might just leave that as it is and just tack along that edge there so it doesn't lift up if it gets caught. I mean, the bottom tray is so pitted, it's mostly rust. It's very hard to weld to because it's paper thin in some places. That's why I've just resorted to tacking it. If I tried to seam weld that, not only would the heat warp the whole back end of the trailer and make it banana shaped, but it would uh, blow holes in most of it. It's hard enough getting some good welds into it. But that'll do. Time to position the tailgate and weld some hinges on. Then paint it all. Well, the hinges are on. I made it so that it can be removable. I'm just going to clean these up and fully weld them. I welded it all upside down while I was underneath it, so a bit more work, welding work to do, but that should do it. Now I can paint everything. At least this back end section, I'll just mask the lights off and hit it all with some epoxy enamel. That should do. Well, all the uh, welding and prep work's done. Grinding, that is. Now time for some chemical prep work, and then paint. I know this is epoxy enamel, but white knot's nowhere near as good as the stuff I normally use, but 
Unfortunately, the uh, supply store that I get my paints from, the high chem stuff, is closed. So, I'm going to use some white night epoxy. Not as good as high chem, but still pretty good. Or the motor spray. Uh, motor spray and high chem are pretty much the same company now, so they use the same chemicals. I'm going to start with some prep wash. Wash all this down, just drench it in it. And then finish up, after that dries, I'll finish up with some acetone. Acetone is brilliant stuff. You can mix it with that auto trans fluid and make the best uh, penetrating lubricant you can get for freeing up seized engines and things. Uh, thin down lacquers and other shit that you can't thin down with normal hydrocarbons. Brilliant stuff. It's about $40 a drum. That's $26 a drum. Well worth buying. Everyone needs lots of acetone in their cupboard. Great stuff. Yeah, acetone's brilliant stuff because it actually bites into and softens the existing layer of paint, which in this case is already epoxy enamel, as far as I can tell. Uh, only drawback is it sort of dissolves latex gloves like they're made out of nothing and dries all the fats out of your hand. So you need a good bit of hand uh, hand moisturiser afterwards, but brilliant stuff. Just load it on. Anywhere you want to paint. I'll mask those lights off first though. Let's do that. It's already taken most of the crappy paint off that back trim. And then you can uh, let it air dry for a second and then start painting with your enamel. Well, the tailgate came up alright. Bit of heap of flat wheel work and get rid of the scale and crap. I'm not fussed about the rest of it. The welds are alright. You don't want to take too much material off or you compromise your weld strength. There we go. A lot of acetone. I've already washed it down. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, don't use a tire that you care about because this stuff does eat tires. So does the paint. It's only an old dunny door wheel. I actually had a couple of yobbos asking about old tyres and things the other day. I told them I'd rather run a box cutter through the sidewall and throw the dead ones at them than bloody sell them to them. Too many yobbos around here doing burnouts on unroadworthy tyres. I'll never give them to them or sell them to them. Little pricks. Beautiful. My users are probably going to get scratched up in a couple of weeks. It is a working trailer, not a display piece, but you might as well do it properly. Now that's looking good getting a bit cold out here so the paint will probably go a bit flat but that's not a bad thing considering I mismatched the colour this isn't uh, gloss black this is a hammer tone dark grey a charcoal grey like my car so that doesn't matter but being a working trailer most of this will probably get scraped off later anyway if it goes flat that will probably blend in a bit better you can see the difference it's, even though this is still tacky like touch dry, it's still a different colour. Well, that's the job well done. Still got to let the paint finish drying. It's going a bit cold, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, no doubt you'll see some videos with Brad. He'll be using this thing quite a lot. <laughs> That'll do for now. And uh, thanks for watching. Time to have a tidy up around here again. Bit of a mess inside. Sort of.